Hello everyone, this is chapter 7, part 4. This is demand estimation and forecasting. In this part, we'll focus on time series forecasts. What was a time series model? A time series model shows how a different time order sequence of observations on a variable is generated. So your data will look like, uh, for instance, in the stock prices, for instance, um, it could be as fine as data by second, right? But it could be daily, day one, two, three, four. This is how they show actually stock market data. For instance, I was looking at Tesla prices. If you go check out Tesla prices from 2013 till today, right? 2000, whatever year we're in, uh, you will see the prices are reported daily. So that's an example of a time series model. Simplest form is linear trend forecasting. So I want to know if my sales are going up, down, or they're constant, right? Sales in each time period, QT, T is for time, are assumed to be linearly related to time. So for instance, these are my sales, time. So I want my sales to go hopefully up, right? This is the sales going up shape. What if there is no relationship? So my sales are constant. That's not very good. But the versus sales are trending down. This happened to, for instance, Blockbuster company. Blockbuster. Okay. So you want to see what your sales are doing. All right. So the simplest form is QT sales as a function of time trend. Literally, you create a T variable, one, two, three, or you can put years. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be changing each period to change delta T is by one period, whatever that period is. Okay, so let's learn about linear trend forecasting. We're going to use regression analysis to estimate values of A and B. The coefficient estimate will be B hat, right? Coefficient estimate B hat will give you that relationship. So Q hat sales, estimated sales, the function of A hat plus B hat T. Okay, if B is positive, Sales are increasing over time. That's what we want. B is negative. Sales are decreasing over time. B is equal to zero. Sales are constant over time. Okay. So statistical significance of a trend is determined by testing beta head or by examining the uh, p-value of beta head. So you want p beta head to be statistically significant, right? If it's not statistically significant, even if it's a positive value, that is still equal to zero you found beta head to be negative but not statistically significant that's statistically zero okay so an example is this so we have this company sales these are sales and the data looks like this qt t t is here 2010 2011 you can code data 2000 uh, 19 is the last data point okay so you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten points then what you have here is that QT you have sales figures right 2010 corresponding sales figure 2011 these are all numbers we are gonna see a data very soon so I have 2010 11 12 you know data points look like this so what you do you estimate this line using regression and for the future 2020 and for any future period you can actually find the trend estimated trend line okay so an example looks like this this is forecasting sales for terminator pest control okay so this is a terminator pest control started in january 2019 right and quantity of home service is 46. So they are showing an increased uh, sales, but they want to actually prove that their sales are increasing consistently to be able to qualify for a loan to buy one more truck. Okay. So data is 15 periods, January 2019 to March 2020. So we have all these data points, right? Time period one, January 2019. 46 time period 2 february 2019 is 56 so all these data points so what we are doing is we're 
finding this line estimated trend line okay so what I'm going to do we're going to stop here and we're going to go ahead and literally run this regression because you can here is the terminator pest control chapter 7 data set okay so January 19 February 19 right March till uh, March of 19 March of 2020 okay so you have 15 observations these are your sales or number of houses service with the pest control so I'm going to create a trend variable so instead of using January 19 right you can't really enter this as a value but this is period 1 period 2 period 3 I'm going to uh, choose this then click on this double click here it will go down so I am going to 100% run a regression hit data all right data analysis it's happening <laughs> it takes a minute all right so we're going to pick regression then we are going to put labels y range is your qt and x range is your all right so give it a minute all right so we found this estimated uh, equation so it looks like I'm going to just write it down QT right intercept is this I'm going to just grab maybe a couple of decimal places boom so let me do it 46.57 plus right what is B B hat is here 4.52 4.52 little t okay so this is what your equation estimated equation looks like so it's qt hat all right so let's be precise so i'm going to go back to my slides it takes a second so one more thing before we leave i'm sorry <laughs> so check this out okay check this out this is pretty cool let me see i wish to draw something oh okay so here you have uh, T stats are quite large. P values are super low. Okay, so these both are statistically significant. So there is a time trend. So it says each period, your each month, your sales go up by 4.5. Okay, Ho more homes um, serviced. So with this trend line, what we do here is it's really awesome. You just instead of you know whenever you see T, right? Sorry. This is period 16, plug in 16 here. So 46.57 plus 4.53 times 16. That is going to be the next value here. Here. For this is your prediction or forecast of April. So I found that April sales are going to be what? 119. Okay, next. What's going to happen with the May 2020 sales, right? 17th period. So you plug in 17 instead of T. If you calculate, you're going to find 123.6. 123.6. Okay. Then you have June 2020. 2020. 18. Okay, so 128.1. So this is how you predict the future values. What did we do? Period 18, you plug in 18 in place of T. So this is pretty much it. 